We got a little wet. Yeah, a little bit. You alright? Yeah, I got yeah. my foul gear. Oh yeah. Yeah. Morning. What time is it? Early. Uh, <laughs> 5 a.m. 5. 20 after 5. What are we doing? We're leaving. We're leaving. Yeah. How do you feel? Tired. <laughs> I really need some coffee right now. <laughs> so it's August 6th and it's really dark because the sun hasn't come up yet and we're just getting the boat ready to go making some coffee while we're still plugged into the dock so we can use the electric kettle. And then that's it. The weather out on the lake looks pretty good. We're going to be motoring for the first four hours or so, but uh, the weather looks all right. And yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to... Are you going to cry now? Maybe. Uh -oh. I love you. I love you too. We got this. We do. <laughs> okay. So we gotta get the boat ready. Um, I got the spreader lights on, so we can actually see what we're doing. But we gotta, as soon as she's done with the electric kettle, I'm gonna unplug the dock line, or so the power line that goes to the dock, um, and it won't be plugged in again for a really long time. So I think we got it figured out. We got enough solar. Um, this is it. I won't lie, it's been hard. It's been really difficult, but. A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. We got our uh, jerry cans all lashed down. Jerry cans are all lashed down. And our dinghy thing up on deck. We gotta make a little bit of more neat and tidy on the deck. We got some work to do, but ultimately everything's strapped down, we can go. Um, before we hit any rough water though, I think we're gonna come up and go once over everything. Whew. Yeah, it's showtime. I'm gonna start undoing dock lines and we gotta get our dock lines off the pilings and all that stuff, so that's gonna be kind of a pain, but in about 20 minutes, we're gonna be uh, backing out. So, yeah, hopefully we'll have just the sun, the sun will be rising uh, right on our stern as we leave, because we're headed due west. So we'll have a sunrise to guide us out of the channel in about half an hour, so that should be good. talk loud because engines running and there's wind and what so it's blowing uh I don't know what the apparent it's probably 10 knots but it's on the nose so or just it's just at our highest point of, of uh, sail is where the winds coming from with the apparent uh, we're doing about five five and change if we uh, if we let the motor go and put the sails out we'll be pointed as high as the boat will point with all the extra weight on it which isn't very high uh, it still does okay, but um, 
but we'll be going a lot slower and we'll be beating into the waves all the way to Windsor. So Windsor's only three and three hours, 45 minutes from here. So we're just gonna motor. Um, there's a fuel dock in Windsor, so we'll be able to stock up on diesel when we get there. And today was supposed to be terrible and it's not so terrible. So, Sorry, yeah. not done that. <laughs> so we should be good. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, I feel good though. Feel good. This is kind of becoming real. <laughs> it is. Like we're only, I don't know, maybe a mile out, two miles out, and I'm already like quite happy. Yeah. 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 Like giddy happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that, you know, like seven years ago, I had this dream to do this thing, and finally, it took a long time, but here we are. I'm still tired and crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got enough sunrise now. We left in the dark, but we got enough sunrise now. And that was only half an hour ago. But enough sunrise now that we can see and you can see us. So uh, it's just after 6 a.m. And we're, we're going. We're going. See you down there. So it's been three hours since we left. It's like, uh, what time is it? Like nine, nine something. Nine oh seven. Yeah, three hours on Lake St. Clair. We're just approaching Windsor right now. Um, I think we'll be there in uh, about an hour. Yeah, an hour. Um, where we can fill the diesel tank. We still haven't moved the gauge on the diesel tank, so we're not really burning very much. But we are motoring into the wind. We're only making five knots still. But it's like a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so far. Because the autopilot's on, we're reading books, yeah. we're listening to music. A nice chunk in my book there. Yeah. You just kicked back and like you just got to scan the horizon every five or six minutes, make sure you're not going to hit anything. And it's not bad. A lot of wind, a lot of waves, but it's comfortable. My book got a little bit wet when we took a big wave at the bow. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good. Still nervous and still like ah, the unknown. Except I'm not sure why because it's not like we've never been to Windsor. But yeah, once we go past Windsor, it's gonna be like oh, okay, for real unknown. Yeah, <laughs> we've never sailed out of this lake before. And Lake St. Clair is only like a big circle and it's 25 miles across, so you can always see land. Sometimes you can see both sides of it. Like it just. I don't know, we can see the Renaissance Center in Detroit from our end of the lake, which is 18 miles away. But on a clear day, you can see it, and that's your navigational aid to get to Windsor, yeah. or Detroit, is that. And then now we're close enough that we can actually see the skyline in Windsor as well. So we know exactly where we're going. We can almost see the lighthouse at Lakeview Park Marina. But I think like the depressing part about today is we're only gonna have enough daylight. Like we're gonna get to La Salle, which was like one of our potential first stops. And we'd stay there for free because it's a yacht club at the same ILYC or whatever it is membership as our yacht club. So we can stay there for free tonight, um, but we'll not have charted any new territory. And that's kind of sad. Yeah. I'd rather like push on past La Salle. It's gonna be 2 p.m. when we get there. Like we still have hours and hours and hours of daylight. So we'll have to get to La Salle and check the weather. Um, there's supposed to be a storm system that might, it's like 40% uh, on the uh, western end of Lake Erie, which is right after LaSalle. So it'd be nice to be able to press on into Lake Erie, but the next stop after LaSalle is either an anchorage like one hour past LaSalle, which isn't really worth it um, if we can stay at a dock. But the next stop after that is Putin Bay in Ohio, and Putin Bay is seven hours after LaSalle. Um, the nice part is we'll have turned south 
and our west wind will actually help us. We'll be able to sail to Putin Bay. We'll be sailing like southeast and the wind's like south southwest. So it'll be a pretty quick sail, I think. But I don't know, we'll have to see what happens with the weather. Yeah. It'd be nice to sit at a dock tonight. Maybe we could make a video and if they have Wi-Fi at uh, La Salle Mariners, we could upload the video. So you guys would be like real time, but we'll see. Okay, check in later. So we made it to La Salle and it's sort of raining a little bit. Let me show you the weather app. So there's a huge storm system north of us and it's headed sort of uh, northwest so it's not going to hit us but the trailing end of it may clip Lake Erie a little bit. So we're a little bit leery about heading in. But we talked to some folks here and they sail to Putin Bay a lot more often than we do. And they said, yeah, just go for it. If there's anything, it'll be isolated. So, so yeah, I think we're gonna give her. So we left La Salle Mariners um, 30 or so minutes ago, 41 minutes ago. And there's a little bit of black cloud over to our uh, west. Not too worried about it though. There's a little bit of wind. So we put the main up, but we put two reefs in the main just to be safe. And we're just coming up to Boblo Island, which was a really wildly popular amusement park uh, in the 80s. Uh, and I went there as a kid, but it's closed down since. Um, Candace is going to get some pictures of some of the uh, Boblo Island scenery. Uh, but we're still probably an hour from Lake Erie. We're still motoring up the Detroit River. Um, it's beautiful. Very, very wide. Very, very blue. Really nice. Love it. I think that's Amherstburg over there. Pretty cool. Just approaching the mouth of Lake Erie, we're at the end of the Detroit River, and to our left, it's uh, not bad. To our right, it's not good. But there's nowhere to go. There's no more uh, safe harbors here, so you have to go out or stay here. And the storm might hit here, so we're gonna try to get across Lake Erie as quick as we can. We're pulling seven and a half knots. Should be okay. 2:50 p.m. In the 
Lake Erie. Uh, it's saying that's 24 miles away. And it's going to take some four hours. We're only holding five and change because we're bashing into these waves. So if that storm is going to stay clear of us, which it looks a lot like it is, we just came out of there, like right over there. So if that's, no, sorry, right over there, I think. If that's going to stay clear of us though, then we can put some sail out and actually get a move on. we got a nice southwesterly wind, so it'll be on our back quarter. So we should be able to carry uh, some pretty good speed, better than five and change anyway. was the the uh, jib sheet was on this side of the lifelines going to the back block so we couldn't get it in the front block because it was on the wrong side uh, and we needed the front block because we we're spilling out the top of the jib so it did the same as moving a car forward we wanted to move our block forward we don't have jib tracks so uh, we have a uh, two blocks and uh, the rear ones for pointed upwind and the front one is for beam reach or downwind and we move the front one occasionally but uh, the wind is being weird. It came right around on our stern, so we couldn't hold the jib with any amount of sail in it, or any amount of wind in it. So now we're just back on the motor again, doing 6-1. When we had the jib out, we were in the mid-7s, so we're probably gonna try that trick again, but this time we'll be a little bit more prepared. Size of this lake just is daunting. When you come from Lake St. Clair, that's like not very big. It's massive out here. There's a big ocean freighter way out there on the horizon and Canada is still right there. And that storm is still growling back there. Anyway, that storm is supposed to go toward Detroit. So you can see the whole system and it's going that way, away from us, luckily. Um, but it took the wind with it. There's nothing out here. It's almost dead calm now. So we're motoring, but we're only making five and a half knots of the, I don't know, waves or current, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're uh, 
I don't know, three and change, three hours and change from Quentin Bay. Hi, baby. Hi. How you doing? Oh, you know, I'm a little irritated by all these damn flies. Yeah. So that over there, I think is called Middle Sister Island. And it's basically just all bird shit from what we hear from uh, one of our other sailor buddies. Uh, so it's all flies. And if the wind's south, or, south, or out of the west, they blow over here and they attack you on your boat. There's also a weird looking ship over there. Looks like it's full of garbage. Anyway, we're just over two hours from Putin Bay. Um, you can actually see the first set of islands over there uh, for Putin Bay. Or We've officially made it to Putin Bay. We did it. We're tired. A little bit. It's an 80 mile day. We're just finishing. Uh, just over here is Rattlesnake Island. And then over here, uh, I think that one's Middle Bass Island, over there. Yeah, and we're going to South Bass Island, which is right there. We're two and a half miles to the inlet. The autopilot has done a wicked job today and the diesel has been perfect. We burned about $25 in diesel over 80 miles. So we'll have to figure out the miles per gallon later or miles per liters. Probably switch to gallon because we're in America now. Yeah. Yeah. Gallons. Right? Gallons. 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 But it's beautiful. Like we outran the storm. You can still see it's like quite dark off in that direction. And we're supposed to get some rain tonight, but like way later tonight, like we'll be sleeping. <laughs> we made it. We made it. We're alive. Day Despite one. the storms. Day one in the books quite literally but i don't have it right beside me in the log book oh yeah probably. <laughs> so yeah we uh, did 14 hours today with a one hour layover in la salle to have lunch um and we we're considering staying in la salle as you saw but uh we had a weather window so we took it and rode the edge of that storm all the way here so um for the five minutes we did have the sail up we were well over seven knots but um, everything just sort of fell apart because the sail wasn't rigged properly and the storm was still like very gusty it was like it went down to like five knots of wind right after that so we ended up motoring for most of the day um, I think 13 hours of motoring we spent just a little over $25 in fuel and everything was great the boat was great the motor was great yeah Howdy, you girl. Um, we rolled in here and you might be able to see the flashes it's like thunder and lightning outside right now and we just had like 30 knot winds rip through. Um, but they're gone now. That was the thing we were trying to miss. We were trying to get here early enough to miss that. And we did. We got here an hour before it happened. So, cool. And we had our first successful execution of mooring ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we grabbed a mooring ball. We did it like somebody... We've never done it. Because where we're from, we've never even seen a mooring ball. But we read somewhere a long time ago that don't be the idiot with the boat hook. Who, or don't be the idiot who has the wife go to the bow. And then the husband drives and he pulls the bow up to the mooring ball and the wife swats at it with a boat hook. We did it the way we read and it worked the first time and it worked perfect. We pulled alongside it and we and she was standing in the cockpit with me and she was leaning over the side, like under the lifeline and just waiting. And I pulled alongside the mooring ball really slowly and came to a stop with the mooring ball on the side of our boat. She reached down, hooked the rope through and then she walked up to the bow and I backed the boat up and then she cleats it and we're done. No messing around with the boat hook, no like, we do have an advantage because I'm a seamstress, so I know how to thread a needle. Yeah. Well, and like, <laughs> and you can actually reach it from the side of our boat. If you were on like yeah. a Benetton or a Hunter, this isn't going to work because mm, yeah. you won't be able to reach that far down. Yeah. But yeah, really yeah, successful it day. It worked really good. Yeah. Yeah. Everything worked great. Even like we got really wet in the storm there, but, uh, and it was kind of windy for a little bit, but it and was all right. Yeah. All in all, good day. Day two, we just left the mooring ball area in Putin Bay, and what are we doing, babe? We're sailing. Yay, we're sailing. We headed for adventure. Our worries left behind.
Come on.